welcome back. We are so glad you're here with us today for the nonprofit show. We have an interesting conversation and I am so excited for this. So keeping nonprofit staff and talent, in particular, the subject of parental leave coverage. And to talk to us about this today, we have Lacey Kapinski joining us from Ontario. Thrilled to have you here as founder and CEO of Balance Good. And in just a moment, I'll ask you to share a little bit more about yourself as well as your Mm -hmm. company. We also want to remind you, if we haven't met you yet, Julia Patrick is here. Julia Patrick is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, and I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We are so extremely honored, grateful to have the ongoing support from these amazing partners. So thank you to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University. 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Do us a favor, do yourself a favor, and these companies a favor, check them out. They are here for you. I like to say their mission is your mission because they want to help you do more good in this world. And again, if you have missed any of our previous episodes, here's where you can find them. So we've got you covered. Go ahead and pull out your phone, scan that QR code right there. You can download the app. You can also still find us on streaming broadcast as well as podcast platforms. So wherever you like to binge watch or binge listen Mm -hmm. to your entertainment, go ahead and cue us up there as well. So Lacey, we are thrilled to have you with us today. Again, for all of our viewers and listeners around the world, Lacey Kapinski has joined us founder and CEO of Balance Good. Welcome to you, Lacey. Thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Balance Good. Who are you? Where are you? What What is the good yeah. that you put into this world? <laughs> I like yes. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Um, so as you said, my name is Lacey Kapinski. I'm the founder of Balance Good, which is a very niche consulting agency focused on the nonprofit sector. We actually provide parental leave coverage and support for the nonprofit sector. We really want to change how the nonprofit sector supports working parents, starting from when the journey begins as a working parent um, and when you welcome your child. And we'll get into that for sure uh, in our conversation. Um, But just a little bit more about me personally. So I'm calling from Northern Ontario, where we are getting loads and loads of snow. So I said, fingers crossed, my internet connection maintains because it's it's, uh, like a blizzard out there, which is super fun. But it also means I have my three kids, Mm -hmm. seven, five and three at home with me today. Um, They are rowdy and they are playing quietly upstairs for now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that maintains as well. Um, I have about 15 years of fundraising experience from major gifts um, to annual fund to supporting events, so kind of that jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. Um, when I had my after my second son and, uh, you know, journey with postpartum depression and anxiety, I knew I wasn't going to be able to come back to the traditional workforce in the traditional way. And I knew I didn't want to because I wanted to p- continue to give to my sector, but I also wanted to show my children how you can give to the sector and how you can be involved. Um, So I launched Balance Good. Um, What started out is kind of like generalist consulting turned into this very niche program where we're specifically supporting parental leave coverage in the workplace. Um, So yeah, I'm really excited to be here and talk to you more about that today. I love this. And you know, Jarrett Ransom, uh, the nonprofit nerd herself, mentioned this, and I know, push up your glasses. Um, I, man, you have me trained when I see you do that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you know, Jared uh, mentioned Lacey when we were talking in the green room chatter that you know we've had a, a really strong relationship that that we've built with the Dave Thomas Foundation that supports um, adoption and foster care, and they have educated in, uh, so much and talked about this, and it's really been fun to see the movement of this discussion and how we need to be thinking about this uh, for a multitude of reasons, Uh, not just that it's the right and good thing to do, but that it does Mm -hmm. impact, you know, um, the ecosystem of your organization. So let's dig in and talk about employee staff burnout and turnover. This is one of the biggest issues of our time. And how does parental leave factor into this? 
Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think as fundraisers and nonprofit professionals, we we all hear the stats about turnover, right? And the impact it has in our sector. Trying to keep someone in a role for over two years almost seems impossible these days, um, which has its own impacts on our sector. And, you know, I won't get into that. But when we talk about working parents and working moms specifically, um, we can, I've done the math and it's, loose because I'm not a mathematician, um, but there's about six and a half million women in the American nonprofit sector. And in Canada, where I'm from, um, it's about 1.5 million women in the nonprofit sector that are working moms. So this is incredibly impactful when we actually look at the landscape of the people who are working at our organizations, the majority of them are working moms or, yeah. you know, on top of that, then there's working fathers. So it's really important. Um, anecdotally, like how many times have you heard that people use their parental leave time to look for new jobs to, you know, they don't return to their current job because they know it's not going to be a supportive environment. And then I think about the impact that has on our donors and the actual mission work that we're doing, right? When we are in a field where relationships are key and you're continually turning over, that that's really challenging, right? And we know that parental leave and unsupported parental leave is a factor in this turnover um, problem. You know, Lacey, all of I, I'm just like itching to to dive deep into all of this. Mm-hmm. This speaks to some conversations I've had with some colleagues, you know, jokingly, not jokingly, where they're like, oh, I planned my due date based off of our fundraising calendar, right? Like 100%. I cannot be out of the office end of year. Right, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All of this kind of, yeah, it just stacks on top of the conversation. Yeah. And then I think, okay, well, one, there's so much wrong with that, right? Because families should be first. And here's the thing, like in our sector, we are so passionate about the work that we do, which is fantastic, right? We are changing the world. We are solving some of the biggest problems in the world. Um, But we also like to martyr ourselves to the cause, right? You know, I, I'll, I'll work 12 hours because, who else, if I don't do it, who will, or I will plan my, my firstborn around our annual fund campaign because Mm -hmm. nobody else will be there if I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And those messages that we put out there are not good. And they're not good for setting up the next generation and how we're going to work and balance all of this. Right. So, you know, when I think about the work that balance good is doing and the work that we need to do in the sector, I often think about like, how do we take parental leave from this, like, feared kind of employment gap to like a celebrated life milestone? What if we actually had thoughtful plans prior to parental leaves that would say, hey, it's no big deal. Lacey just announced she's expecting, but we already have a plan. So it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of our campaign. But for some reason, we haven't thought of that yet. We haven't pushed that forward. Yeah, no, we haven't. You know, we think think of the impacts of burnout Uh, impacts of turnover. I mean, one of the stats we share is, especially for that development staff, really looking at 18 months might be the max tenure of, you know, someone staying in that position. So that's a constant turnover, you know, looking at this. I have to ask the question, is this just for newborns? Are we thinking the only time we can talk about parental leave is when we are expecting? No, 100%. So the actual parental leave, yes. And so coming from Canada, like we are very fortunate. We have 12 to 18 months of paid leave off after having a child, which is incredible and amazing, but also like so important and valuable and needed because that's the time your body physically recovers. If you do, you know, give birth, that's the time you bond with your child. And then for adoption and stuff, that's also an extremely critical time to bond with your child. Um, So that time is really important. Um, but then coming back to work, like your child still needs you. They don't disappear after those 12 to 18 months or for, you know, my, my friends in the States, they don't disappear after six weeks, three months, six months, whatever your length of parental leave is. Mm -hmm. Um, so at Balance Good, we think that it's the first step. It's like, if we can get organizations to understand that we need to do this and we need to embrace a working parent and we do this with that first step, then we can continue walking, thinking about parents in all aspects. So um, yeah. because parental leaves don't just impact the person that's going on leave, they also impact the employer. That employer might be a parent of 
three teenagers and they're dealing with all sorts of other things. So if we can take that worry off of their plate too and say, hey, we've got you, we've got this workload, you focus on your workload and your family life in a sense, like we're supporting all working parents then. So Lacey, let's dig into that a little bit more and and share with Mm -hmm. us what the challenges are. I mean, the first thing that I think of is, you know, salary and benefits. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. a huge Mm -hmm. financial piece of of the pie. Talk to us a little bit more about this and how, how does that actually work? Yeah, I think like there's so many challenges with supporting working parents, right? Um, And making sure that you're doing this in a thoughtful way. But Mm -hmm. I think if we come at it from a human, human first lens, where we think about whether you're a parent or not, you should have access to a living wage, you should have access to extended health benefits. And again, that looks very different depending on where you live. Um, But these are things that you just need to have access to. But then when you're supporting a working parent, or you have a working parent on your team, making sure that you have these things are even more important because they have dependents, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So thinking about those things, but I think beyond that, it's about thinking about just the tangible things about how you work in your organization, how you can create a workplace with autonomy, a supportive workplace, a workplace that understands that you're not just development officer X, that you really are a whole person. And that whole person that you bring to the organization is actually what's going to allow you to excel in in the role. Like how many times I've spoken to donors about their family life, Mm -hmm. because that's what motivates them to be philanthropic. Like True. it, it makes connections, right? If we can yeah. bring our whole selves to work as well. Yeah. We've come such a long way and, and Julia, I'm going to out you a little bit because you outed yourself with, with Lacey and I, but you know, even when we look at this 20 years ago, the landscape of how we show up as a person in our profession, how we talk about our families and, and, and dare I say, I shouldn't say dare, but might I also add the family <laughs> looks very different these days, right? Oh, yeah. Like like my son, we call we call it Team Tanner, but there's four very involved parents, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so that's when we think of of oh. parental leave and we think of of the family unit and we think about how far this conversation has come over the decades. Mm-hmm. And there's still so much to go, right? 100%. And Julia, like I'd, I'd welcome your your comments or thought thoughts on this too. But for me, it's like these, I, this idea of a supported parental leave, like a not just like a, oh, Lacey's going on leave. Let's just ignore that fact and continue as usual. Like if we actually <laughs> right. are supportive about it, this right. is like the next evolution of how we engage working parents and especially working women in our sector, right? Yeah. Um, we know we're a sector that's dominated by women. So this is kind of, to me, like the next step. Next it's step. interesting because I feel like there are organizations that I see who um, are like, wow, okay, Lacey, you're going on leave. You better get your ducks in a row and figure it out mm-hmm. versus other organizations that like work as a team and say, okay, what is mm-hmm. it that we're going to do and how how is it that we're going to structure? Um, and that to me, I think is a fascinating look into how an entire organization is being run, right? Because it's almost like you're punishing the woman for, for doing this or the father. And I, and I don't want to miss that, that piece of it too, because if you could, before we go on, talk to us about, are these leaves the same for the, the, the mother versus the father? What if it's the same gender, you know, family, like, how do we look at this? So that we're not only thoughtful, but we also have some, you know, equality here in the, in the, in the landscape. 100%. And so that's why we really focus on this idea of parental leaves, not just maternity leaves. Mm -hmm. Um, Like there are some logistical differences, right? Like if you are the birthing parent, you in Canada, anyways, you have access to additional leave because there's like biological recovery that needs to happen. Right. But if you are, you know, uh, a parent or in a same sex relationship, you still have access to parental leave. And again, this is different in Canada and the States. And I know in the States it's state to state, there's so many nuances to this, but um, the bottom line is, I think it comes down to this looking at who the parents are and what they need in their journey, because everybody is different. Um, 
but yes, like we actually just wrapped up covering a leave for um, a parental leave of a man who took three months off um, when his first born child was born. And it was incredible to be able to support oh. him. And this is in an, um, in Texas, actually, right? So just to be oh. able to support a working dad in Texas covering <laughs> his leave, it was an incredible experience. And so it's, yeah, it's not just women, right? It's everyone in our sector that needs this support. Yeah. You know, all of this is just so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the impacts, you know, a little further, the parental leave on the team, because yeah, I, I interviewed when I was pregnant and it was a virtual mm -hmm. interview, right? So no clue that I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And and then when I got to the final interview and I was very pregnant, Lacey, I was like, just want to tell you in advance before I get there. <laughs> so there's yeah. a lot of conversation that goes into this, right? So that yeah. impacts on parental leave. I can only imagine so many of us are afraid to say yeah. we are pregnant or expecting, yeah. or, you know, our family plan includes adoption to foster in the near future. Mm -hmm. How do we even go about talking about this with our employer and our team. Yeah, it, it's so tricky, right? Because it really depends on the culture that you're like in the organization you're in. I know when I um, first started around family planning, we had to do a lot of fertility treatments. So I was going to fertility treatments prior to work at like six in the morning. And then people are commenting, oh, you look so tired. I can't say anything, right? I'm just like, yeah, not a good night's sleep, but really it's because I'd been up so early and doing all of these things, right? And so this is like not a, a unique journey. So many people have that journey um, or other more challenging ones. So I think there's this piece where if you have a supportive culture, being able to to talk about these things, right? And again, if there's a plan in place for parental leave, it shouldn't be this taboo topic. It's just a reality of life, right? Um, but I also think, and I do want to circle back on like the impacts to the team, because there can be a lot of resentment that builds in teams. Yeah. Like I've heard um, parents say like, oh, I was asked how my vacation was when I returned back from parental leave, right? Or, you know, or, you know, on the other hand, I've seen team members when somebody goes on leave, now they're doing two full-time roles, yeah. right? And they might be a working parent at home or not, right? And just because you choose to not be a parent doesn't mean you choose to have double the workload. That's also not fair, mm -hmm. right? So I think, again, having this supportive structured coverage changes how we look at parental leaves in our organizations. Yeah. But how do we get there? I mean, is it seems to me like, um, it, it's almost a hard thing for an organization to figure out unless they've gone through it or they're in the middle of it. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. because we haven't been talking about it and we haven't been really, um, planning for it. What would you advise for an organization that's never looked into this, but yet they feel like they need to do it or they want to do it? Maybe that's the better way to phrase it. Yeah, I think the first thing is to look into it, right? To mm -hmm. think about, okay, what are my, you know, like-minded organizations doing in this? Are people, you know, are there thoughtful ways people are supporting parental leaves? And, you know, at Balance Good, we're really trying to build out this kind of understanding of here's what parental leave can look like in a different, you know, in a variety of different ways. Um, making sure you have a parental leave policy in place. Okay. And that I know that's really hard because when we talk about small nonprofits, like I've worked with some, they don't even have a donor recognition policy in place or, <laughs> you know, so then how are they going to prioritize a parental leave policy? But you have to prioritize the people that work in your organization because they're the people that are serving your mission. Mm -hmm. So if you prioritize those people, then the work happens and the mission, you know, you drive forward the mission. So um, I think it's those kind of pieces and having these discussions and people being willing to speak up and say, this was my negative experience, or this was my yeah. positive experience. This is how we can learn from it. But that's also a place of privilege. Like I can speak up because I'm a consultant and have my own agency, where mm. when you are at the whim mm. of an employer, it's very different and it looks very different. And I understand yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that's really good call out. I, I appreciate you mentioning that, Lacey. Overall, we're really talking about support, supporting working parents and, you know, mm -hmm. encompassing that parental leave, which I got to say, when we talk about the nonprofit sector, 
there's just so many things where people are like, oh, I can't work for nonprofits because I don't make enough money. So we're trying mm-hmm. to sweeten the pot or the deal, yeah. if you will, with like yeah. these ancillary benefits, the mm-hmm. flexibility of schedule. So what else could we consider when it comes to supporting the working parents in the sector? Yeah, so this is really interesting um, because I've actually just posted a couple job positions for Balance Good, thinking about what would be the ideal role for a parent, right? So what Mm -hmm. are the things that are needed for a parent to excel? And so some of the things that I included was complete autonomy and schedule, a reduced reduced working hours, so a standard um, 32-hour week, um, four Mm -hmm. weeks paid vacation, plus extra time off for school shutdowns because... A parent should, you shouldn't just have to use up all your vacation because your kids aren't in school. Like that's not fun, right? Vacations are also for recharging. Um, So I think building out some of those things and you're right, Jarrett, that like maybe the nonprofit sector doesn't pay like as comparative, obviously to the for-profit sector, but there are things we can do that make this more welcoming. So for me, autonomy is key allowing teams to have autonomy in their schedule. And I always say that you have to weigh this autonomy against performance metrics like you can't just give like freedom and autonomy and not manage those expectations right the performance still needs to happen you need to still be meeting your goals but some organizations don't even have performance metrics in place they're not tracking them they're not monitoring it so if you set up these systems and then you report back on them innately then you should be able to trust your team with autonomy right because they're doing the work that they're meant to do yeah I have to ask this curveball question, Lacey, and and I and I hope you're okay with it. But I'm hearing yeah. more and more resentment from the working professionals that either don't have children or have chosen not to have children, and really mm-hmm. hearing the like, so and so doesn't have to do all the extra hours because they have the excuse of picking up their kid or you know having their kid at home. It's a holiday. How are you seeing as you implement these parental mm-hmm. leave policies? Um, how do we consider everyone in this yeah. decision? It's a good question. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think when people meet me, they think like, "Oh, she's she only talks for working parents." But no, for me, it is about like the working person because we mm-hmm. all have lives outside of of work, right? So whether it is your children, or it is volunteerism that you're passionate about, your animals, travel, whatever it is, you're entitled to have that, and you're entitled to have that. Fully. Um, so I think, again, this is where this autonomy piece comes into play. It's mm-hmm. not about I need to leave early because I need to pick up my child. It's I've gotten my work done. I've met my goals and, you know, I'm meeting my goals and getting done what needs to get done. And I will be leaving early to pick up my child. But my coworker who doesn't have children should also be able to leave at three if they've completed their work because they want to go for a run or they want to do whatever they want to do. It really doesn't matter. But what matters is that we have happier, more engaged, healthier people in the work environment doing the hard work that we do in our sector. Yeah. I feel like we're scratching the surface on this, don't you? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, because I think it's a whole, um, it's a whole discussion about how we perceive work, right? And is it, it's, it's like, if you think back to, you know, the, the um, factory line to Mm -hmm. the office line, right? This concept of what is it you're doing? And if you're sitting at your desk, you're working. And we all know that that's not true. Just because you're Mm -hmm. sitting there looking busy doesn't mean you're being productive. And yet we Mm -hmm. haven't really come to that point where we can say, yeah, you know, you don't have to be um, looking busy in order to be productive as we all understand it. But I think Lacey, you said something very interesting. And that is, is that this, this takes the onus of understanding performance and metrics back onto the plate of, of the organization. And I don't think we do that enough. No, not and at so, all. Right. Like yeah. just really like how many people, even in position descriptions, are they actually reflective of the work that we're doing? Do they have other duties as assigned? Because then how do you track that, right? So having very specific goals for the roles you have in your organization is critical in supporting all of your team members, including working parents. Mm -hmm. I think you set people up for failure if you don't have these clear expectations. Right. I think it's, to me, this is like such a core piece of this discussion. And we are missing this 
so often. I mean, Jarrett and I see this all the time. Organizations that are like, you know, they just pick these random, uh, you know, growth metrics that they want to, you know, oh, we want to improve by 25%. It's like, well, wait a minute. What does that mean? Right? Yeah. And this, I think, goes into the psychology and the psychosis, if you will, of how we look at the performance and the structure of our nonprofits. Um, it has to be meaningful and it has to be well thought out. And we are not putting that that energy up front. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes when it, sorry, Jared, but I think sometimes when I talk, like I do sound like just very optimistic and mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we can just do this. Right. And I don't mean to be frivolous about it. It's a lot of work, right? Yeah, it's right. a lot of work to do all of these things, but if we don't start talking about these things yes. and advocating for change, it's not going to happen. And we have a sector that's ready for change. Right. So I think we just, we need to start pushing some of these things through. And for me, my focus is parental leave, but that means so much more. Yeah. I love it. I, I do too. One final question as, as we pull up your contact information, how often should we review our parental leave policies? Good question. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Um, I think it could be part of like your, whether it's annual or biannual, like policy review procedure that you should have as an organization. Are all of our policies reflective of the work that we're doing? Sure. Is it, are they still serving us and stuff like that? So I would say Mm -hmm. but I mean in reality most organizations have policies they sit there they collect us they're not actually you know so it, this <laughs> serves a bigger important. question of how are you you know looking at all of your policies um, mm -hmm. and really being thoughtful about when somebody does come back from parental leave asking them did the policy serve you right did it meet its goals did right. it help and then as the you know leader did the policy serve our organization and our mission mm -hmm. and our team members Wow. This has really been fascinating. I have really enjoyed this. And um, it's part of the discussion of, of how we evolve as a sector. And, and this is just the beginning. Um, Lacey Kemsky, Kapensky, excuse me. Kapensky. Okay. No, it's Kapensky. not okay. It. I, not, you've been so brilliant. I don't want to misspeak your name. <laughs> Founder and CEO of Balanced Good. Um, balancedgood.com check them out really a great beautiful website by the way um yeah. really thoughtful and thought provoking and again Jarrett and I um have really started on this conversation um because of the Dave Thomas Foundation in so many ways and so this is a conversation that we need to keep going and moving forward check out balancedgood.com I mean you'll get some great information um, and to, to start with your organization and looking at some of these things. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jared R. Ransom. Together, we have produced more than 950 shows, and those shows have been supported by amazing partners, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, of course, the nonprofit nerd herself, and nonprofit Tech Talk. Oh, yeah, you got me pushing up my glasses, Jarrett. It, it <laughs> just works that way. Yeah, it just works that way. So grateful to have all of their support. So grateful, Lacey. Thank you. Even during a blizzard in Canada, <laughs> in Ontario, that you're joining us with your own children at home today. <laughs> So thank you for, for, you know, bringing your expertise to the conversation and to all of you that have joined us today. We are so glad that you're here. And as we wrap up every episode, we end with this statement. And you know what, especially with today's conversation with Lacey, I think it's going to sound different. I think and the so. statement is to stay well so you can do well. Thanks everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow.